So here it is. You guys asked for more Foundry videos, and so let's talk about how to run your game more efficiently, or at least smoother, using Foundry VTT. We will talk about some tips I think are important when you're running as a GM. I'll show off some settings that you should definitely change to make things easier. Some modules that I think are kind of necessities. Key disclaimer in this video, what I'm going to show you works for me and helps me make my game run more efficiently. However, having my exact same up, same setup might not work for you. A big takeaway is to find whatever you like or what you feel like you and your players need and make it work for you and then to practice using it all the time. I also think that keeping things consistent is key here. So if you're constantly changing your modules and changing things up, there's no way you can run efficiently and smoothly because you're changing things every week that you play d and I should also say that half the battle is just remembering what to do, so a lot of it is just practice. I've been using Foundry for, I don't know, like three years now, <laughs> so I think it's become second nature for me to use things. I also don't have 130 modules like some people I know. I really kind of keep it as trim and slim as I can when it comes to modules because one, I feel like if you have too many modules, it's going to slow things down. But two, I, I feel like I don't need all of those excessive pretty things to make the game run and I don't want to have to double check at each version update whether this module is still compatible with this current version of Foundry. For me personally I try to keep it pretty consistent with my key modules and then just go from there. Keep those couple things in mind and we'll dive into what works for me and hopefully it will also work for you. First, let's talk about some settings that you definitely need to change. Obviously their preference, these are in general things that most DMs try to change before they run a game. So a lot of these are just core settings. The biggest one I think that I immediately change is the chat bubbles. It's perfectly fine to have chat bubbles up when your players want to type something in, but the big thing is the pan to speaker option. If you have that checked, then it immediately pans to whoever's typing in the bubble, and that is a huge distraction for me as a player, but also as a DM because my entire screen just moved to focus on this player while I was trying to figure out what I was doing. I always turn that off. I don't care if they chat, little chat bubbles can come up all the time. I don't care. But I'd rather not have my whole screen move to follow it. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's automatically checked to begin with because it's definitely not user friendly. <laughs> so go into settings and uncheck that one. The next one you want to turn on is the turn on left click to release. If you don't have this on, by default, Foundry makes you click and drag on an empty space to unselect anything that you have selected right now. It is unintuitive, it is not user friendly, and I've had to explain to people how to do this too many times. <laughs> so if you have this checked, it will make it so much more intuitive to just click off of something and then you're no longer selecting tokens or whatever and it'll just save you an explanation and a headache. Then finally, this other one is definitely personal preference, but under the combat tracker, I turn the auto skip defeated on. If an enemy is defeated, it should just go away and I don't want to have to click through three dead enemies to get to the next player. <laughs> I just check that. Um, that will just make things run a little bit quicker. You don't have to do that. You can just jump to the next player or whatever. You, you could do it more manually, but then you have to, you have to think about it. And I'm all for less things for me to think about while I'm running a game. Okay, so when it comes to running a session with a VTT, it's not just the combat section you have to worry about, it's the entire running of the game, right? So for me personally, that means being prepared in many different ways. But the biggest way is to prepare either my journals or my notes for the session. For me personally, I don't put my session notes in a digital format. Obviously, I have 
been making these wonderful journals that I actually sell. I do that because I actually like handwritten journals. I like to write my notes down. It helps me remember them later, etc., etc. I don't use Foundry to keep my session notes in. Instead, I tend to keep my notebook right in front of me, open to the page that I need it to be on. I pull out any resources that I need, like NPC details, etc., or anything that I think I'm going to be using that session, and I stick it right in front of me, in front of the computer. However, I know that that's not for everybody. Some people like to keep everything in one place, so you totally can do that with Foundry. And Foundry version 11, which is the Foundry version that we're talking about today, if that was unclear, is better set up now with their journal system, and so you don't even need any modules for this. However, if you're using an older version of Foundry, there are better journaling options to enhance your experience with that. In particular, I think I used Monk's journal something. I'll put it on the screen. I'll look it up later and put it on the screen. But I used that one before version 11. I've heard of one called GM Notes, which lets you put secret notes on pretty much any any entry anywhere. So you don't have to be careful about what you put in certain journals or what journals you share. You can still have like your own secret section. Again, I don't use Foundry for that, but I also have a Pathfinder game where the whole module has already been built for me. I'm doing Abomination Vaults, which is mostly like dungeon crawl kind of idea. The whole entire book is already in the in Foundry for me, so I don't have to add journals in. I honestly find this more confusing because now I have to go through and find specific things throughout the module. My recommendation is to kind of do what you would with other like note-taking systems, even a physical note-taking system. If you're going to put your notes into Foundry, I would make it like a bullet-pointed list, put it in code so that you can very quickly gain and glean information from it without scrolling through paragraphs and paragraphs of information. I find that even doing that in Foundry makes it hard for me um, because I get distracted or I can't find things as easily in Foundry as I could on a written piece of paper. But I also think that you can, especially with Foundry, you have the unique ability to drag journal entries and put them on the map wherever you need them. So when I do have stuff like the Pathfinder thing, I really do enjoy that they put each section in each room right on the map for you. If my players enter a new room, I can just double click on that and see all the information in one place. It's still a lot for me to go through. I do have to say that they organize it and separate it a little bit and you can do that as well with different colored fonts or boxing certain things and utilizing some of the built-in features of making your journal entries look different. But for me personally, I can't really do that. I tend to still take my own notes and write and review them in a physical format in front of me. The last thing were journal entries, not only putting them on the map where you need them, but also pop out ones that you know you're going to need. So you're gonna need a core module, which I feel like every Foundry user ever uses this one. It's called Pop Out. It literally just gives you a button. You can pop any window out and drag and drop it on a different screen to save you some space real estate in, within the Foundry interface. I do this with the Pathfinder stuff just so that it's on a different screen, it's easy to click through, it's easy to do. Um, some things to note, which may or may not be fixed at this point, um, sometimes when you click on things to activate them in the journal entry, it doesn't actually activate because it's popped out, so you might have to put it back in and then do the thing and then pop it back out. This can also happen with character sheets. I've seen sometimes someone try to use their character sheet to make a roll, but then it doesn't do it. So they have to pop it back in, pop it back out. Doesn't happen all the time. I'm not sure when the bug happens or what, but it is something to keep in mind. That's the basics for the organization you need to do if you wanna make your game run smoother. The amount of effort you put into that is totally up to you, but I do find like having everything right there to an extent does help, whether that's like right in front of me on the keyboard or on the screen. The other thing you're gonna wanna do though is organize 
everything. What do I mean? I mean like your NPCs, your tokens, your scenes, everything needs to be easy for you to find. For me, I tend to keep my players in their own folder and then I have NPCs and monsters and then I have scene related NPCs and monsters. I tend to put monsters and NPCs that my players are going to encounter a lot in the topmost folder. These are things like if I was doing Horde of the Dragon Queen in Foundry, you run into a lot of kobolds so I would probably just keep a kobold information token in there so that I wouldn't have to go through and add it to each individual thing or dig for a kobold if they just happen to run into some. Then I also organize everything by scene. If I know that this particular map has a certain kind of enemy I will make a folder with the same name as that scene and I put the tokens that are going to be in that scene in there. This is just in case I accidentally delete them off the map, which happens, or if I feel like maybe an encounter was too easy, an early encounter on that map was too easy, I should beef it up, I should add more enemies, or that kind of thing. You know, you have all those tokens that you know are gonna be found here in this section. I also include any map specific monsters in those sections. Maybe this one has a particular boss monster at the end. You know, it's all there and you don't have to go digging for it. You don't have to go through your compendiums, nothing. Let's talk about running encounters more efficiently. This is a struggle whether or not you are in person or virtual because encounters in 5v take forever and it is a drag, I'll be honest. If you're running a virtual game, here Here's some things that I think you definitely need that will make your game better. And some of these are modules that I have talked about in other videos, and you can go reference those over here. One of those will be, of course, MIDI QOL, which is a module that kind of makes it roll more like Roll20, which is probably the only thing Roll20 gets right. It will make it so you roll and you don't have to click like 8 million times to just roll. It will save your players some frustration, it will save you some frustration. It makes it easier to target enemies and apply damage. It just overall does these little tiny things for you so you don't have to think about it. Let's run through the exercise of when your players don't target things, what do you do? You can set it up so that you can target things after they roll, that's in the MIDI QOL settings, or you can just go old school and right click on the token that needs the damage and then type minus whatever the hit points are right into that little health box and you can change it right there. That for me tends to be easier. You can also, I think with MIDI QL, you can just click on him and then hover over the damage in the chat and hit apply damage to the token that you were selecting. I've done this accidentally though to players, so just be aware that that's a thing. But again, all of this is just different ways of doing the same thing. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you know there are multiple ways to do it in case something goes wrong. I'll be honest, there are so many settings for MIDI QOL that you could do and I'm not gonna run through all of them because honestly there are other people out there who do a better job of going through all the different workflow settings. In fact, one such person is in my community, so I'm going to just put a link and a little shout out to him. Dungeon Master Josh offers a whole video about this, but I actually used his video to set up my stuff to some extent, or at least to understand what the heck is going on with all this. So yeah. Have fun. Another thing that I like to do for just setup purposes and combat to make things smoother is to already have all my tokens on the map. In real life, when you are at a table, you know, there's always a little bit of setup for the map, you know, whether that's pulling out a whole thing to set up on the table, whether that's drawing it out on the board, or just putting the tokens on. With a virtual tabletop, you don't need to have all that extra setup. Things should already be ready. You can put all of your tokens right on and you can just make them invisible and then reveal them once your players encounter them. This will save you time dragging and dropping them onto the screen. That's why that or organizational step is more for, as a backup, say you accidentally delete tokens or something like that. What happens if your players decide to attack everything like the murder hobos that they are? If you don't have a map prepared, that is when we introduce the uh-oh scene, as I like to call it. This is literally just a grid. I put my players' tokens on there and that's it. 
And that's where those other folders come into play. Say they attack an NPC that's really on their side, but you know, you have murder hobos. You can just easily drag and drop that token right on the map. And then you have something that's generally like giving them an idea of how far away they are and the rest is just theater of the mind. You can even take this map a step further. Say you're on the road traveling and you know you're going through some grasslands. You could just make a whole background grasslands, an Icelandic tundra, city, street, whatever. And then you still have the feel without it getting too crazy intricate. You could even go ahead and draw things in, which then you're now mimicking that in-person style of having a big dry erase sheet on the table and using a dry erase marker on it. You can use the drawing tools to draw out trees or there's lots you could do if you really wanted to. We're talking about trying to keep it simple and smooth and this is probably the best way to do it is just to always have an uh-oh scene <laughs> as I call it in case your players do things you didn't think of. Another great module to have would be dynamic active effects. This does not work with Pathfinder, I found out. Dynamic active effects will apply things like bless and it'll keep track of who's concentrating on it and etc. You don't have to think about it, so that's one less thing off of your combat full plate. The rest of these modules and tips are to help keep your players on track. A lot of this will actually need the feedback of your players. They might like certain things better than others, so you might have to tweak the settings to fit your group to make it run more efficiently. The first one I have is dice tray. Definitely don't need it, but it gives you actual pictures of the die at the bottom of the screen you can add as many d20s or d6s as you want and then your modifier so if at any point you can't find the button or your players can't find the button to roll something you could just do it manually I find that's easier than telling them to type slash d8 plus blah 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 it's more visual and I think that's easier for most people another way to make it easier for your players tidy sheets for 5e Pathfinder friends, you probably don't have to do this because Pathfinder UI is just much neater <laughs> than the D&D one. The 5e tidy sheets does organize it better and kind of separates things a little bit better than the rule set, the general rule set does. So I highly recommend it and it also puts everything, even monsters, in a similar format so it makes it easier for you to tell them where to look. I've only heard good things from my players about that switch. So that definitely helps them find things more quickly. The other way is to get token action HUD and that goes in the top left side of your screen. It is essentially just like a tool belt that includes all of the actions they can do, any spells they can do, and it's all listed up there, says how long it takes, etc, etc, and they don't have to go digging through their character sheet to find the button for it. They can click the button from up there. There is a Pathfinder equivalent of this one as well, so highly recommend. <laughs> if you add this, it just gives your players another way to find it so that they're not spending 80 years deciding on what to do. Or actually, it would be 80 years finding the button after they spent 80 years deciding what to do. <laughs> Finally found a combat carousel tracker to replace the one that stopped being supported. <laughs> so I found it. It is called Carousel combat tracker. This literally puts a little carousel at the top like you see in Baldur's Gate 3 or any turn-based game that tells you whose turn is up next and when. I haven't had a chance to use it. I'm actually gonna try it tonight in my Pathfinder game. It's just a good way of keeping everybody on track so people know when their turn is up. Think of it as using initiative tents on your DM screen. It's just one more tool to keep your players moving. On that note, this one works with version 11. I don't know that it'll work with older versions, but older versions had a different one called Combat Carousel, which does essentially the same thing. I don't know if this newer one that I found is backwards compatible. Another great addition is the Monk's Combat Marker. They put a big circle around whoever's next and then they can see their character and they can't be like, where am I, where am I? You're right there. 
in the big magic circle. I think that helps keep people on track as well. Because again, all of these are tools to keep the game running smoother. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. Let me know in the comments what you might do differently that helps when you run combat or when you run a game in Foundry. This was based on some other people's comments in the Discord channels. If you are looking for more Foundry tips or you're looking for something in particular, leave a comment below and we will try to go for it.